Well, welcome. We'd like to take a minute and welcome you all to the services this morning. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you get something from it. So, um, first off, uh, we want to welcome you, and do we have any joys or uh, announcements this morning? So, Jack, I uh, had awakened the dawn that was going on in Emporia. Uh -huh. The 24 hours of prayer, I think whoever put that on did a nice job. Excellent. That was this last week? It was Friday night until Saturday night. Okay. Okay. This has been a while that I've had a special and chance and I asked Rock the Ridge up in the middle of the campus and Rock. Well, good. Any other happenings or joys that uh, we have this morning? Okay, if not, how about birthdays? Travis had to work today, but his birthday is Tuesday. This coming Tuesday? Okay, for Travis Hines. Anyone else? Okay, why don't we uh, sing happy birthday here uh, to Travis. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Anniversaries? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> For, forgot that one. Surely someone else has an anniversary to bail me out here, don't they? Or, huh? Enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's time to move on here. <laughs> But it's been a wonderful 40-some years, uh, uh, 43, yeah. Uh, it's been a wonderful 43 years with a wonderful woman. So I've been blessed with that one. Okay. Okay. Um, in announcements, I think we've got some announcements here. Um, today we should also open, uh, I think, for the second week, the Sunday school classes. So they'll be meeting, and uh, uh, that's a good welcome addition to get back. Uh, one thing we might um, mention is uh, if you go over to the fellowship hall, uh, some of the ladies been doing some major cleaning. Uh, we're trying to open up some storage space for more relevant stuff. So there's tables over there that if anyone would like some stuff off of that, uh, please help yourself. Uh, is that right, Syl? I get that right? Good. <laughs> okay, so uh, you might look at that. Uh, tomorrow night there will be, uh, again, Bible study with uh, Merle and Joan. So we meet out here at the Fellowship Hall. Would like to invite everybody that would like to come uh, uh, to uh, do so. It's at 6.30 here in the Fellowship Hall. Um, Saturday, the 26th of September, not this month, uh, they'll have the National and Global Day of Prayer and Repentance on the National Mall throughout America and the world, even in your home, church, or city. So if you'd like to become aware and see how that, um, to register or, or get connected with that event, uh, you might uh, look at the bulletin there, and it's got a website and stuff that you can sign up for. And on Saturday, September 28th, the 
The Praise Fest has been postponed that was in Manhattan? Okay. So are there any other announcements that we've missed or anything on that? Um, uh, events are kind of in limbo a lot of times with the situation, uh, particularly if there's large gatherings or stuff in those. So maybe they can hit those again next week. So anyway, any other announcements that we might have today that uh, uh, people want to share? The Central School class last week, we made something for Pastor John, and we had the wise man and the foolish man, so they have a little card for you, and it says, don't be foolish, choose Jesus, and then we also made you a sand cross that you can put in your home for a housewarming gift. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. See? Beautiful. Aww. Thanks, Gates. Put this right up here. This thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Children's Church. Come on, kids. Come on down. Yay. I don't know if I'll just come on sit right over there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. You want to go to church? She said, ah. Uh, all right. Okay. So, let me ask you all a question. How many of you have had a time when you were separated from your parents? When you were walking down the street, maybe somewhere in Emporia or at Walmart or even at the house, and you wanted to be with dad and you looked around and dad wasn't around or mom wasn't around? Remember that? How did that make you feel? Bad. Bad. Scary, okay? Isn't it really scary? So you see, today, what we're going to talk about real quick is about Jesus saying that there is nothing in this world that can separate us from. So what I want you to remember is that when you believe and trust in Jesus Christ, there is nothing in this world. Because you see, when you separate yourself from Jesus, or when you allow anything to separate you from Jesus, it becomes scared of you. Just how you remember when you were scared of the lazy dad or mom around. Okay? So let's read this here. Let's read this from the Bible real quick. Let's see what the Bible tells us. So the Bible tells us that this is from the Bible. The Bible says here, it asks us the question, who shall separate us from the law of Christ? It says, Shall trouble? Have you had some trouble before? Have you been in trouble before? <laughs> Good. Now, look, that trouble you got in. Did dad or mom like put you in a, in a timeout? <laughs> Good. So, so even, even the trouble that you got in, that will not separate you from Jesus Christ. It says here, hardship or persecution. Well, let's talk about hardship. So you know what hardship is? Or something that be hard, that you want to climb up on a tree or on the top of so hard to climb up on it. Yeah. That type of hardship, it will not separate you from Jesus. So that's what the Bible is telling us. It says nothing will separate us from Jesus Christ. Okay? All right, let us pray. There we go. All right. Now let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day because we know you love us and we know that there is nothing in this world that will separate us from you. And we glorify the Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Remember that now. Nothing. 
you will trouble that you get me. Okay. Oh, they got some treats. Okay, shall we stand if you're able and join together in our gathering hymn? Okay, let's go to our call to worship. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or death? As it is written, for you sake, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, And in our opening prayer, if you join in. God of grace and mercy, we offer our gifts to you this day, knowing that it is your love and presence that have sustained us through all our difficult days. We know that there have been days when fear and anxiety have gotten the better of us, and we have needed the reminder Paul gave in the epistle to the Romans. If God is for us, who is against us? Help us to live as Christ calls us, to share what we have, and show life and compassion as Christ has taught us. We boldly pray.
pray in the name of Jesus, Savior and Redeemer. Amen. The first scripture for today is found in Romans 8, 26 to 39. In the same way, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for all the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to be, can be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And though he pre, pre, predestined, 
He also called those he he also called those he called he also justified. That he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he also not, along with him, graciously give us all those things? Who will bring any charges against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? All it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the in future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And then the second reading from the gospel is Matthew. First reading is 31 to 33. And then a second reading from verse 44 to 52. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants, then becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air and the, come and perch in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and made into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke these things to all the, to the crowds in parables, but he did not say anything to them without using a parable. Okay, and then from verse 44 to 52. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he had it he he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and he bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pushed it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. That is how it is at the end of the stay age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw those to the fiery furnace, whereas there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things, Jesus asked? Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. The scripture just read 
the gospel talks about the kingdom of heaven. And it gives us a vivid description of what the kingdom of heaven looks like. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and most merciful God, we thank you and we praise you for this day. Lord, this is the day that you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, that the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this morning, we heard the reading from the epistle <clears throat> of Romans. And we also heard the reading from the book of Matthew, where Jesus was describing a vivid imagination of the kingdom of heaven. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, in this life we encounter many situations and problems that can put us in a place where we just want to be left alone. I say again, sometimes we get caught up in our situation and problems in this world and we just want to be left alone in our own corner and, and don't want to be bothered by nobody. But however, it is important that we understand despite our trials and tribulations, God is always with us. God is always with us despite our issues and our, our various problems. Because God promised us in Deuteronomy 31 and 8, he says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. My dear brothers and sisters, this promise assures us that regardless of where we find ourselves, God will continue to be with us. Yes, there might be times that we think that God has forgotten us, but I, I, I stand here to remind you that God is with you. At the beginning of this scripture, Paul assures, the, uh, uh, assures us of the Holy Spirit intercession and how the Holy Spirit helps us in prayers. Yes, uh, when we begin to read in Romans chapter 8 of, of verses uh, 35, uh, 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 verses 26, Paul begins to talk about the Holy Spirit. He says here that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Yes, we are weak in our flesh. And the Holy Spirit comes and helps us. He goes on further to remind us about how things work out for the good because of God's purpose for our lives. Now, uh, the, 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 the epistle read earlier today is full of a lot of good information. And you can pull like about five or six or ten different sermons from there. But for, 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 to, for today, I want for us to focus on verses 31 through 39. Paul opens with a question that we all sometimes ask ourselves. Who can separate us from the love of God? Paul asks us this question. He says here, yeah, who can separate us from the love of God? As I reflect on this passage, I begin to understand that God's love for me is unending. And we must continue to focus on what God has for us. As I reflect on, on, on these few passages, I begin to, to, to look and see that God's love for me is greater than my problems. I want you to think that God's love for you is greater than your situation and your circumstances that you find yourself. And so what I did was I went to the scripture and I encouraged you to do the same. And I look at uh, verse 31 through 34. And it says here in verse 31, Paul goes on to say, what then shall we say? In response to this, if God is, and I want you to put your name in that spot. 
You see, when we begin to read the Bible, we need to, we need to, 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 to make it a part of us. And you see, the scriptures say, if God is for John, who can be against John? If God is for Doug, who can be against Doug? If God, if God is for Brenda, who can be against Brenda? I want you to put your name in that spot because there you identify and become part of that scripture. He goes on to say that he did not spare his son, but gave him up for me. I want you to put your, your name in that spot. You see, Paul is reassuring us of God's love. In every section here, he goes down in verse 33, and he says, who will bring any charge against? You put your name there. You see, because there are people that bring charges against us. People don't like us for who we are. There are people who don't like you because of the clothes you wear, because of the work that you do, because the way you look. And so Paul is saying that who can bring charge against me, whom God has chosen? Yes, God has chosen you and I for his purpose. And so it's important for us to remember this. He goes on in verse 34, and then he comes to the question of condemnation. You see, before Jesus Christ's death on Calvary Cross, we were all condemned by our sin, what we were doing. But guess what? The joy comes when Jesus was born, when he went through his ministry, and now he was crucified, he died and was buried. Jesus Christ, who is condemned for you and me, has paid the price. And so now we are conquerors in Jesus' name. My brothers and sisters, there are times in our lives when we begin to form thoughts or ideas that God does not love us because of our circumstances. Yes, I know probably I'm the only one that have thought that before. Yes, there have, there have been situations in my life where I've thought that God did not care for me because of what I was going through. Because I allowed my problems and my situations to, 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 to cloud my, 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 my thoughts of God. But yet and still, God is there. So I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to understand that God is with us. Things a situation may be going well for, for a, a minute, but then when it starts to go wrong, we begin to harbor those thoughts. But I say to you today that God is with us because we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. So the first thing I want to share with you, knowing that you are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ, is that you are overcomers. You are overcomers. Now, what do I mean by this? We are overcomers because of Christ's death on Calvary Cross. We are overcomers because of Christ's resurrection on Calvary, from Calvary. We are overcomers because of Christ's ascension into heaven. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, we are overcomers because Revelation 12 and 11 tells us that we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. What is, what is Revelation is saying there? It's saying that we have overcome sin because of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
We have overcome sin because of the word of the testimony. You see, when you who are followers of Jesus Christ begin to give your testimony, people begin to realize and understand that yes, there is a true and a living God. Once we trust and obey God, those situations and issues that have tried to pull us down, we can overcome them. My brothers and sisters, Paul is reminding us that we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ because we are overcomers. Verses 31 through 34, Paul reassures us about being more than conquerors because of Christ. Every step of the way, Jesus Christ put himself in our place. Every issues, every problems that we have, I'm reminded of a poem that talks about the footprints in the sands of time. And a quick summary of that, of, 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 of that uh, poem is that the man began to talk about all his trials and tribulations as he walks along the seashore. And he saw only one set of footprints. And at the end of the poem, he said, God, where were you when I was going through my trials and tribulations? And God told him, he said, my child, the one set of footprints you saw was my footprints because I was carrying you through the trials and the tribulations. Sometimes we see a footprint and think that it is our footprints that is carrying us through our trials. So we are overcomers because of Jesus Christ. The next thing we need to understand because we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ is we must understand God's love for us. God's love for us. And now I'm not just talking about any kind of love, but I'm talking about that agape love. That love that says that despite what you do to me, I will still love you. Despite what you have going through, despite the way how you behave or the way how you act, I will still love you. That's the agape love. Once we understand that love that God has for us, we become more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Jesus said it best in John 3, 16. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, John 3, 16, we learn about it. We, 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 we recite it. It becomes a part of us. But do you really understand? The first thing I want you to take from John 3, 16 is that it is a two-way street. It's not a one-way love. It's an agape love. And what do I mean by a two-way street? He says here, that because of God's love for us, he sent his only son. That's the first side of the road that is coming towards you. But then, for you to receive that love, he says here, whoever believes, and that's, this, that's our role, we must believe, that is the part we play, we must believe. so that we do not perish, but have everlasting life. So we have a part to play in this. And once we begin to understand God's love, we become more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. My fellow Christians, who can separate us from the love of God? Today, regardless of what you may be encountering, just know that the love God has for you and I 
is so strong that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Yes, we did the children's church earlier, and we talked about how nothing, regardless of what we are going through or what we are dealing with, can separate us from the love of Christ. I want to pause here for a minute because Paul made an awesome statement here. And when Paul talks about nothing can separate us from Jesus Christ, he quoted Psalm 44 in here. He says here, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to the slaughter. Psalm 44. I want you to go back home and read Psalm 44. You see, in Psalm 44, the psalmist was talking about how the Israelites were going through a lot of struggles. And what the psalmist did was the psalmist, through his lament, talked about the different struggles that they were going through, the different trials that they were dealing with. And what Paul is doing is that Paul is reminding the Israelites, he's reminding you and I that we will go through some struggles. We will deal with some trials and tribulations. But at the end of the day, God is still with us. God is not asleep. You see, if you, if you go to that Psalm, Psalm 44, and... I, 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 I just want to I just want to point this out real quick. If you go to Psalm 44 and you say and you see the last the last things he the last thing he says here he says in Psalm 44 he says we are brought down to the he goes on to talk about how rise up and help us redeem us because of your unfailing love. He tells us that, he, 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 he asks God, he said, God, you have that unfailing love for us. And so when we understand God's love, we know that God is always with us. My dear brothers and sisters, I want you to know that we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Finally, because of our faith. Our faith as small as a mustard seed. We are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ because Hebrew 11 and 1 tells us now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes, we have not seen Jesus Christ in person. We have not seen God Almighty in person. We have not seen the Holy Spirit, but we experience God. We feel God's presence amongst us, especially when we're going through our issues, our trials. And that is the faith that we hold on to. You see, we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ because of our faith. The Bible reminds us about the kingdom of God in the gospel read this morning, about our faith being like a mustard seed. You see, in the gospel, Jesus gave us a vivid imagination of what the kingdom of God looks like. And we need to understand that the kingdom of God, if we have that faith like a mustard seed, we will go to where Jesus is. We must begin to put our faith to work, believing and knowing that whatever the situation is, our faith made us more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. My fellow Christians, I want you to know that you are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ despite your trials and tribulations because James 1 and 12 tells us that blessed is the man and woman who remains steadfast on a trial for when, he had, when they have stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. Yes, 
we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Because when we are faced with affliction, 2 Corinthians 1 and 5 reminds us that the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ, meaning for the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Jesus Christ. Yes, we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ because we can overcome our time of grief and mourning because Revelations 21 and 4 tells us that God will wipe every tear from our eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. We are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ, my dear brothers and sisters. Therefore, I want you to know that life will throw you a curveball, and things may become difficult, especially those things that we do not understand. But I want you to remember that we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ because we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ because of God's love for us through his son, Jesus Christ. And we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ because of our faith in God. Amen. Amen and amen. At this time, we will move into any concerns that we have so that we can go into our pastoral prayer. Are there any concerns or any prayer requests? Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the storm and blast in our eternal home. O oh, most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you and glorify you for one more day. Now, Lord, we come, Lord, before your throne of grace and mercy, presenting our requests and supplications to you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, praying for the post office of Emporia, Heavenly Father. The issue of the, the air condition, Heavenly Father, we know how it is during this time of the year, Heavenly Father, how... Uh, the, 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 the weather is, is, is warm and hot out there. But dear God, we pray that you will find uh, someone, that they will find someone to be able to fix the AC, God. We present that to you right now in the name of Jesus. We claim that AC will be corrected and everything will go well before the beginning of uh, 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 the work day, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we come presenting our dear brother Vince Snyder to you, Heavenly Father. As he lay out in uh, Kansas City, dear God, we pray that your healing will go out there to him, Lord, and, and your, 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 your angel of healing will, will, will bless him, Heavenly Father, and heal his body, dear God. Heavenly Father, we know that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask of you. God, we pray for Sharon. Heavenly Father, as she is going through this complication with the cancer, Heavenly Father, we pray that, God, you will find a way out for her, dear God. Heavenly Father, you will put your, your arms of blessings upon her. Dear God, you will be with the doctors, the nurses, and give them the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to be able to find that which will be able to take care of your child, Sharon, Heavenly Father. God, we know that you are the healer, Lord, and so we call on your name, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals God. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus because you said by your blood we are healed, Heavenly Father. So long, God, we just glorify your name, Heavenly Father. We, we present our children to you wherever they are. We pray, God, that you bless them and keep them in your perfect care, Lord. Heavenly Father, as, as we prepare, Lord, uh, in the next couple of months to get ready for school, dear God, we pray that you will be with our leaders. They will find a solution that will, be, that will get our children back into the school system, Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name and we lift you up on high, God. We continue to pre, uh, uh, bring our leaders in church and state to your throne of grace and mercy, God. 
We pray, God, that you put your hands upon them, Heavenly Father, and give them that knowledge to lead us, Lord, the way how you would want us to be led. God, we magnify your name and we praise you. We thank you for each and every one in this congregation. We pray for the unspoken prayer request, dear God. We know what is going on in our hearts and minds, Lord. We pray for this congregation collectively, Lord, and individually, Lord. Those who are here, those who wanted to make it but couldn't make it, Lord. We pray that you bless them and keep them in your perfect care. We thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives. Now, dear God, Jesus, as you taught your disciples how to pray, you said we are bold to say, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation for deliver us from evil from the eyes the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen let us all stand as you all know the uh, collection boxes is in the back there so you can just put in your your tithes and offerings
victory in Jesus. We are more than conqueror in Jesus Christ. Let us close with our benediction. May the blessings of the Lord God Almighty, the blessed and Holy Spirit, our comforter, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, rest, root, and abide with you as you depart this place, knowing that you are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Don't forget Sunday school.